Come, welcome. Thanks for the interest. We look forward to uh, getting to know you and uh, having you here and working with you in the future. My name is Alex. I'm an associate professor in the operations research group as well with uh, Hara uh, and uh, and many others. And uh, I teach. I've been teaching in this program for six years now, uh, which doesn't make me sound too young. Um, I was teaching Analytics Edge for three years at first, and now I'm teaching uh, the optimization course. Uh, so roughly speaking, I'm going to, going to talk a little bit uh, at a higher level about what we try to do in the program and what 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 I teach um, uh, contributes to the program, what I do in research contributes to the program. And that really has to do with this overall diagram that you've probably seen um, several times, which is the, the overall pipeline of analytics from data to models to decisions to impact and value. And uh, and really, we we're thinking about three steps of uh, of analytics here, right? The, all of the descriptive analytics, uh, the data management, the data visualization, the dashboards that try to get us like a sense of what our our data, what do we what do we have visibility into, um, what do the data tell us, what seems to be the case, what's going on, what's happening, uh, which was really the focus of analytics in the two thousands, early two thousand and tens. Um, which is still the case of like many data, many data, many data science organizations because you know data quality is an important thing. Um, and then we'll move. We're moving from descriptive to predictive analytics, where we're trying to get insights into what's going on and uh, why is something happening and what's going to happen in the future. And so that's really the world of machine learning that. Uh, that we're all uh, accustomed to by now. Um, and that is also uh, maybe the data science of the 2010s and early 2020s, uh, where more and more organizations are building a very deep analytics team with machine learning engineers, machine learning uh, scientists, with data scientists, uh, data science engineers, and so on and so forth. Um, what, what, what we pride ourselves um, at Sloan is to close the loop and go all the way to the prescriptive analytics, which is kind of, what should we do about it, right? And it's not only a question of what does our data tell us about today's system and tomorrow's system. It's also how can we impact the system to steer it into a better direction, um, to steer it into a world of higher value, higher impact, the world cost, better efficiency, better customer service, and whatever your objective is. Um, and this is really where optimization starts playing a role. And that's why we have designed the curriculum around machine learning and optimization as the two main pillars. So I have been teaching optimization for three years. Um, this is an example of that pipeline in action. Um, so I was talking about descriptive, predictive, prescriptive analytics. Just one company, one example of um, like that entire pipeline over time for that particular example, which is UPS. Um, and at UPS, um, they started, oops, sorry. They started um, putting together a, um, a an interesting communication device that was called DIAD that was just trying to coordinate the action of all of the drivers in their fleet using mobile, uh, mobile devices. So uh, like a really old school operations, I don't know what this is doing this, I apologize. I, um, really old school operations where a centralized dispatcher would start calling people saying, hey, next you go there, next you go there, next you go there. And then when they started doing that, they realized, wow, there is a lot of value associated with centralized control, fleet optimization, fleet management, and routing optimization. The problem is that this is really, really hard to do for many reasons. One is that we don't really know where people are. Two, we don't really know what are all of the components of demand and travel times. And three, even if we know, it's really, really hard to optimize. This is an example of a very difficult optimization problem, vehicle routing optimization, where even if you have perfect information, you have so many possible decisions to make that it's completely unfathomable to the human brain and even easy algorithms cannot handle that easy or uh, uh, existing algorithms cannot really handle that at scale um, to deliver the value that is needed. Um, because you're evolving into complex temporal and spatial networks, what you do at noon impacts what you can and cannot do at 6 p.m. What you do in, uh, in, the, in, in the Bronx impacts what you can and cannot do in Manhattan. And so all of these things are interconnected. And so you need to optimize so many decisions all at once. And that's really where the algorithms and optimization can help make better decisions. Right? And so... 
here is what happened at um, at UPS. In the 2000s, they started putting telematics, which is a bunch of sensors in their trucks to have real-time visibility into where people are and what they are doing. Then package flow technology, which is a prescriptive analytics um, um, software of uh, you know machine learning to predict travel times and predict customer demand. And then they built on top of that this um, tool called Orion, which is on-road uh, integrated optimization network or something like this, um, that is doing the routing optimization and the centralized dispatch. Um, an exceptional research development and um, deployment project took 10 years uh, and resulted in very significant savings, both in terms of monetary amounts, but also in terms of uh, carbon emissions. Um, and um, and so what is also interesting in this example is that, uh, and there is a paper that I use in, in teaching that we can discuss in, in the future, but, um, but basically we, we tend to think as, as data scientists as like really the technical part being really what is, what is important, where you have, you need to do the research, you need to do the development, you need to do the IT systems. What is interesting over there is that the research was 10% of the time, 10% of the cost. Okay, so what else? 20% development. What, what is that? It's basically integrating our algorithms with the IT system, having an end-to-end -end pipelines, which is something that you're going to do a lot of as well to just make sure that things work in production or work in an automated system. Okay, but what about the remaining 70%? Deployment, change management, working with people, making sure that they adopt the tool, how they adopt the tool, when they adopt the tool when they do not, how they use it as a decision support system. And so they have done amazing work to kind of ensure that integration. Um, one of my favorite examples is actually creating a video game where a driver could compete with the tool, understand where they were making different de decisions, and, and then they would all analyze the data from the video game simulation so they could improve the tool on the one hand, but also convince the drivers that the tool was making better decisions sometimes. Um, all right. So this is uh, this is one example of what we are aspiring to do in each organization that we are um, involved with, um, and at our level uh, to start with, we need to uh, to learn optimization. So this is what the what the course will be about. So this is one of the core courses in the in the program, uh, the optimization class that I'm currently teaching uh, with uh, with a current cohort. Uh, so we're trying to do that. We're trying to do that by developing models that enable to translate. Uh, practical problems into mathematical models that are tractable and, and amenable to analysis, so linear optimization, integer optimization, nonlinear optimization, and whatnot. Um, we are going into algorithms. How do these methods work? Um, what solvers are available? How do they work? What is doable versus what is really, really hard? And what do we do when the algorithms are not enough? And uh, how can we create our own algorithms to do better? And then we're also getting into... Um, Practical um, practical implications, uh, including uh, you know how to build models that are most relevant to decision makers, how to use them as decision tools, and what does optimization tell us in terms of how we should manage our systems better. The the, the plots at the bottom uh, show us the sheer improvement in hardware and software technologies. Today we are in a, in a world where a lot of problems that were un, in, unimaginable not so long ago now are solved routinely in practice. Um, and that is enable, that is really unlocking the capabilities of the world of optimization in a way that is um, uh, that is inspiring, exciting, because it creates a lot of opportunities. Uh, and so I do a lot of that in my research. Um, and let, let me jump here directly. So I have um, three main areas of research that are active at this point. One is in urban mobility. Um, um, the other one is in decarbonization. And the last one is in social good. So my uh, urban mobility, I, I look at uh, microtransit in particular. So how to create, design, and operate systems that are hybrid between transit and ride sharing. What does that look like? How to design it? How to op operate it? How to optimize it? Right. So how to make transit more flexible, or uh, and how to use high capacity vehicles as compared to um, Uber, Lyft, taxis, DD, uh, and these other things. Um, in the world of decarbonization, two projects that we have active at the moment are one project on the operations of electric trucks, um, and one project on, and one project on the uh, operations of uh, cloud supply chains, in particular big uh, data centers. So this is a collaboration with Microsoft. Um, 
And then uh, in um, social good, we have we did uh, one project on vaccine allocation. I can talk more about this as well. We have one project on wildfire suppression and one project on organ transplantation. And all of them are basically some uh, resource large scale resource allocation over time and over space in order to move people from place to place, deliver goods to people, um, deliver data to people in data centers, but also perform mission critical activities like providing organs, providing vaccines or suppressing wildfires. So this is an example of a project that we did in the midst of the pandemic, actually in January, 2021. So a very, uh, very hectic project at first where we were optimizing for the incoming Biden administration, uh, where to locate the vaccin vaccination centers and then how to distribute vaccines for like uh, what it was called at the time, the 100 million vaccines in a 100 day campaign for the first three months of the administration. And then trying to pull, to get a sense of who would get vaccinated as a result and what the death toll of the pandemic would be. The objective being then to minimize the death toll of the pandemic uh, by optimizing the location of the vaccination centers. And what the what the, the chart on the right is telling us is that the proposed strategy was improving the efficacy of a vaccination campaign by 20 to 30 percent as compared to just having something simple that is let's put vaccination centers where there are a lot of people or where there are a lot of cases we can actually do better than that and so optimization matters in that case optimization can turn one vaccine into 1.2 or 1.3 vaccines if you if you manage your stockpile uh, effectively so that was that's one example of what we've been doing where i can talk way more about it uh, of course i look forward to uh, see you soon on campus